Hi guys, these notes are going to be the notes for lipids and I'm going to start off by quickly reviewing the uh, material that you guys learned for the knowledge check that is the level one information. So we had already gone over that lipids, their basic, their chemical structure, if you ask you to define their chemical structure, is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in no specific ratio. The bonds that hold lipids together are called ester bonds. The monomers for lipids are the triglycerides, and lipids have three functions. Number one, long-term energy. Number two, chemical messengers. And three, they form the phospholipid bilayer, membranes of the cells. Some examples of lipids are oils, fats, waxes, estrogen, testosterone, those phospholipids, basically things that are not going to be soluble in water. And this is why in class I made sure to emphasize not to describe water as a universal solvent. None of these will dissolve in water unless there's something added to it. So we cannot say universal, instead we say versatile solvent for a property of water. So this is the level one information that you guys have studied. Now I'm going to go over the level two information, which is looking at how the structure affects function in lipids. And there's two examples that I'm going to give you guys. Example number one is the difference between a saturated fat and an unsaturated fat. So I'm gonna draw a little T-chart here A saturated fat versus an unsaturated fat. So let's define both of these before we actually start looking into what their structure actually is. Saturated fats contain the maximum number of hydrogens uh, that would be available to the number of carbons that are in our saturated fats. So they contain the maximum number of hydrogens um, that would be available to bond with those carbons. Unsaturated fats do not have the maximum number of hydrogens that would be available to the number of carbons in your chain. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a picture and what we're gonna do is we're gonna count the number of hydrogens that are available and you'll see the difference between a saturated and unsaturated fat. We'll also look at how that structure uh, contributes to the properties of those fats. So what I'm gonna do is draw a very small chain of carbons. Let's just do three to make it simple. I'm going to do the same carb chain of carbons for my unsaturated fat. Leave a little bit of space down here. I do want to leave a little bit of space down here to go over the phospholipids, our second example, but this should be enough space for our um, saturated versus unsaturated fats. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw in chain. So I have oxygen in both of them. Remember that carbon forms four bonds because of its valence electrons. These four bonds can either be with another element or carbon can actually form double and triple bonds with itself. So I'm gonna start with both of these identical. And to both of these, I'm going to add a chain of carbons. To make this kind of simple, I'm just only gonna use a few carbons so that we're not trying to count hundreds and hundreds of hydrogens. So I'm going to um, add two additional carbons to each carbon in my backbone. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the unsaturated fats. So in both saturated and unsaturated fats, I should have the same number of carbons. I'm gonna count just this portion down here. Just to make it simple, I'm just gonna count the number of carbons that are in this portion right in here. One, two, three, four, five, 
six carbons. Yes, these are carbons, and yes, we could count these two, but for the sake of simplicity, and to keep this kind of clean, we're only gonna look at this area right in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Both my saturated and unsaturated fats have six carbons to start with. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see the difference between a saturated versus an unsaturated fat. So a saturated fat would contain the maximum number of hydrogens. Again, I'm focusing just on this portion right here. Let's look here. This carbon has two bonds, which means it can bond with two more hydrogens. This one only has one bond, so it can bind with three hydrogens. This carbon here has two bonds, so it can form a bond with two more hydrogens. This one has one bond, so it can bind with three hydrogens. And it's going to be the same thing down on this portion right here. Okay, so now all my carbons have the maximum number of bonds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hydrogens. And that is my saturated fat. For my unsaturated fat, the reason they don't have the maximum number of hydrogens available to them is because of a double bond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a double bond between this carbon and this carbon, but this bond can be anywhere. Again, I'm only focusing on these carbons right here just to make it simple. There's my six carbons, and now let's start adding our, our hydrogens based on four bonds for carbon. So this carbon would have four, this carbon would have three. This carbon right here already has one, two, three bonds. That means it can only bond, bind to one more hydrogen. There are my four. One, two, three, four. This carbon already has two, so it's only going to be able to bind to two more hydrogens. Down here at the bottom, this one can form with two. This one will bond with three. And so what I'm going to do now is count the number of hydrogens that are in this unsaturated fat. And that unsaturated fat is because of that double bond right here. So, one, two, three, four. Remember, we're only doing this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So when you look at the number of hydrogens in an unsaturated fat, because of that double bond, it its number of hydrogens is not the same as a saturated fat. And this structure, this change in structure, contributes to some of the properties of your unsaturated fat. For example, your, your saturated fats are going to be things like butter, lard, things that are solid at room temperature. Unsaturated fats are going to be your oils. And these are liquid at room temperature. Let's just go up here, solid. Maybe a way to help you to remember is that solids are saturated. Solids are saturated. They both start with S. So your solids are your saturated fats, which contain the maximum number of hydrogens available to them based on the number of carbons. Unsaturated fats are the ones that are going to be liquid at room temperature. These are your oils, corn oil, olive oil, avocado oil. It doesn't matter what it is. They do not have the maximum number of hydrogens, and it's due to a double or even possibly a triple bond, even possibly due to m several double or triple bonds within the molecule itself. The last example, so that was example number one of how the structure of lipids affects their function. The other example that I want to go over with you guys are your phospholipids. phospholipids. I'm actually going to draw this kind of sideways just so I have space. This should be a review from them ninth grade biology. Your phospholipids have a head and two tails. And the head region is what we call hydrophilic. 
The tail region is what we call hydrophobic. Sorry, let me get that in focus. The tails themselves can also be described as saturated and unsaturated to describe its structure. So its structure, the molecules that make up the head versus the molecules that make up the tail affect, affect how these phospholipids function within that plasma membrane. I hope this was helpful to you guys and I'll see you later.